Ben, hello. Can you see us? If you can see us, give us a comment and say hello. Are we live? As I say, this is the awkward bit. This is like the standing in a lift, <laughs> staring at each other, not knowing if you're actually there or. <laughs> it's coming up. Just there we go. Fast. We're on LinkedIn. Hello, everyone. Okay, oh, let me just mute that. LinkedIn. Hello. Can you see us? Can hear you. There we go. We've got three people. We've got six people. Hello. Welcome. Hey. How are you all? Hi. Say hello in the comments. Let us know where you're coming from, who you are. 10 people, 11. All racking in. Five o'clock on a Tuesday. It's the best place you could be. Yeah. Come on in. Come on in. Take a seat. We're just going to wait a wee second. Let everyone drop in. Hey, Fiona. How we... uh, Mark. How are you guys doing? Hey, Anne. Hey, Mark. Hey, Fiona. Welcome. Hi, Mark Hutton. Nicole, how are we all? Surviving? Still here. Still here. Still here. <laughs> still here. We're still here. Come and join us. <laughs> Go and grab a coffee or whatever. Take a wee seat. No one really does work at five o'clock on a Tuesday anyway. They're all on Facebook or LinkedIn. True. True. <laughs> Even me. You better not be on Facebook whilst we're doing this. <laughs> I, know, I know. I'm just. I'm on Candy Crush. <laughs> cool. How is everyone? If you just joined us, say hello in the comments below. Let us know where you're from. And Rachel will let you get started when you feel comfortable. I mean, you were late coming, you know, before the session for our wee practice run, but we'll, we'll forgive that. We don't hold grudges. <laughs> no, I don't even remember that. We don't you remember that. You won't hold grudges. Not worth remember it. We won't bring it up. It's just like I won't bring up your hair, but like that's totally fine. Or my lack of hair. I know. Come on. It's back oh, now. Here. Hi, Jessica. Is Jessica a friend, hey. Jay? Uh, she is a friend, yes. She's a very yeah, creative, well, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome person. Yeah. There's loads of cool people. We there know we loads of cool people. There's Andrew. Jessica there. We can highlight her on the screen. There Hello, we everyone. Yay. <laughs> well, let's get started then so that we can get in with the conversation rather than us just dribbling on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so good to see you all. Thank you so much for joining us. As Andrew said, at five o'clock on a Tuesday and I am Rachel Brown for those of you who don't know me and I'm part of Creative Entrepreneurs Club which is a upskilling membership platform. We're all about empowerment, we're all about inspiration and I hope over the last few months we've been all about enabling you to make some sense of the direction going forward in the crazy pandemic we have going on right now. Um, I am absolutely thrilled tonight though that we've got one of the most awesome pe people in the not only in the comedy scene in Scotland but in the production scene and the writing scene, somebody who's a well-kent face, as they say, all across the festival and the fringe. Um, somebody who I'm honoured to say is a good friend of mine, as well as a cracking talent in Scotland, is Jay Lafferty is going to be with us. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Jay, so Jay. to have you here. And before we kick off, um, I'm going to introduce Andrew. He's going to give a bit of context about why we do these chats every second Tuesday on LinkedIn Live and the Made Brave channel at five o'clock. And then we're just going to kick off into questions. Feel free, though, to ask any question that you want to ask. We are totally up and open to answering anything. We hope you get some inspiration from this and hopefully um, we give you a bit of a few laughs as well um, along the way. So, Andrew, over to you. Thanks, Rachel. And hi, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining us on Tuesday. Um, so I'm Andrew Doby. I'm the founder here at Made Brave. Made Brave, for those who don't know, we are a global strategic brand agency. Um, we're also joined here today with Keenan Erwin, who is our brand manager. Hey, Keenan, say hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> Hello. Uh, for those um, who don't know and haven't been kind of following us over the last week, while um, Rachel um, 
and myself joined forces just when uh, I suppose everything was happening with COVID. Uh, we were all in a state of panic and um, we sort of got together to try and figure out how we could help and support the creative industries in this time. Um, so initially we um, built a support group here on LinkedIn. Um, so if you go up into your search bar and you search for creative industry COVID support, there is a group where um, all sorts of friendly, lovely people are sharing resources, sharing access to grants, loans, and a bit of moral support. Um, and um, so, yeah, there's about three and a half thousand people, um, possibly close to four thousand. I've not actually checked, Keenan, maybe you know, um, now that are up there. So um, feel free to join in with that. Rachel and her team at Creative Entrepreneurs Club were very, also very kind um, to um, lend us and work with us um, on their platform, Creative Entrepreneurs Club, which was usually a paid for platform. They've opened that up for the creative industries. So if you head over to creativeentrepreneursclub.co.uk, um, there is now loads of support. There is a job board over there where people are posting um, jobs. Um, and so if, you, if you're in the position where you're looking for work right now, head over there. There's lots of uh, help. Um, and if you're in a position where you have roles for anyone, please head over there and place them on there. You can also, also access some one-to-one -one support. So um, if you're in a place where you don't possibly know what your next step is, if you need a little bit of a guiding hand, or you just need a little bit of a chit chat, um, you can head over. Um, Rachel has amassed a, a fantastic group of helpers and supporters from very different specialisms. There's um, you know people with creative backgrounds, there's financial backgrounds, there's operational backgrounds, there's all sorts of help and support. And you just need to ask, you can book a free session, um, no strings attached, just go and ask for a bit of help. If um, you know someone will listen to you and if they can point you in the direction of help, they um, they will very much do so. So um, yeah, our sessions, um, this is the fourth in this series. Um, we had run a few more sessions that were slightly more business orientated. Um, we've recorded those. They are all placed on the Creative Entrepreneurs Club website. You can also find them over on the Made Brave YouTube channel. Just search for Made Brave on YouTube. This is the fourth in the series, though, where we're focusing on creative people like us and so we've um, brought Jay on the show today because we're all very much in need of a laugh and Jay is a comedian and so we're hoping she's quite funny we're yet to find out and um, oh, so no, okay. no pressure Jay um, <laughs> but no we these sessions are set up and um, you know I suppose we're, we're looking to kind of hopefully inspire you leave you maybe give you a little bit of respite from the hard work that we're all putting in at the moment but hopefully um, Jay and even ourselves inspire some creative thoughts um, with you all right now. Um, we're going to be running this session for the next 45 minutes, although we've just spent eight of those minutes already. So for the next 22 minutes, um, we're going to be hearing from Jay, hearing a little bit about her story, where she's come from, and um, the effects you know, on COVID and such like with um, how um, uh, it's affected her industry, etc. And then we've got 15 minutes to ask her as many questions as you can. So if you've got questions as they come along, pop them in the comments below. Keenan will be pulling them out um, and um, yeah, we'll be um, asking those at the end of the session. So back to you, Rachel, I think. Well, for those of you who are just joining us, we're doing a quick interview with Jay Lafferty. Lo There's a build up here, Jay, that's just getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> bigger, and bigger and bigger. I'm, I'm getting so, nervous now. <laughs> right? So I'll just continue this build up because Jay is a stand up comic, writer, and producer, and a regular on BBC Scotland's Breaking the News. If you haven't seen it, I totally recommend it. Um, and actually, this is a cool fact it was a performance on BBC's Breaking the News. So uh, G hit the front page of the New York Times, which we're going to ask her about, for her hilarious uh, this is, I'm reading this, I quote <laughs> G, hilarious <laughs> description of Theresa May's Brexit deal. Um, G's crown has been crowned Scottish Comedy Awards Best Compare in 2009, um, and with her Edinburgh Fringe hit 2009, sorry, 2019, not 2009, because <laughs> You were like 12 or something in 2009. <laughs> like, what's going to happen? I was. Um, I was. <laughs> 2019. And with her Fringe show in 2019, a hitch solo show um, called Jammy, um, being made into a BBC Radio Scotland three part show, which is awesome. The journey around Jammy and the ones before it is something we'll talk about today because it really is inspiring. It's a brilliant um, achievement. Um, 2020, as for loads of us, was shaping up to be a bumper year and the world hit to a halt. So, 
we all need a giggle more than ever and Jay is determined to keep people laughing even through these dark times and <laughs> um, taking part in three of the stand-up comedy club Saturday live shows which was a brilliant idea and that was watched by over 64,000 people um, and the Gilded Balloons online weekly stand-up show Sofa Set List which I'm pretty chuffed I never had a gin before I said that because that could have all went <laughs> horribly wrong but Sofa Set List Jay has also appeared on Susan Kalman's Socially Distant on BBC Scotland and continues to be a regular voice on Breaking the News. And I'm delighted that in 2015, Jay started her own production company, Watch This Space. Um, and the goal around that is to really support emerging writers and performers from the Scottish um, comedy community. So, Jay, Ken and you've still not said a word. The building is yeah. strong. <laughs> this is our well, We need to get that a bit tighter, I think, don't we? <laughs> Hi, Larry Passy. Andrew, over to you. <laughs> so Jay, yeah, no, thanks very much for joining us. Um, can you let, us, uh, let everyone know a little bit about your own words, kind of what you do, what your day-to-day -day is and what that looks like? Uh, so my day-to-day -day at the moment is, is very, <laughs> <laughs> very different from the usual so um i'm a stand-up comedian uh producer writer uh i mainly spend outside of covid most of my time chatting to people introducing acts on stage i am what is known as a compare um to trade although i do do um sets as well because that's the favorite thing of a compare where the audience come up to you at the end and go you should give stand up a try you'd be good at it <laughs> <laughs> so i do a lot of comparing um across the country um i've worked for the sand comedy club and the gilded balloon and the glee club and all the big clubs um across the uk and um yeah i just i have a lovely time normally chatting to audiences full of people breathing on each other and not socially distanced so and that is how did you get into all that were you like the cheeky one at school and like the cheeky one in the class and then that's that, that kind of led you in to, how, how does it start um, I was uh what Rachel would refer to as a challenging young person uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had, um, yeah, I was very talkative in school. All my school report cards were like, Jay talks too much. If Jay listens as much as she talks, she'd be a genius, all these sorts of things. Uh, I was very chatty and just loved to make people laugh the, in school. And I, it's the usual, every comedian has the exact same story. I, I hate to say this, right? We're not all as unique as we'd like to say that we are. Um, so every comedian is, is bullied and used comedy as a way to kind of um, stop the bullying or deflect the bullying. Uh, and so, yeah, that was kind of my story as well. It's You just used comedy and laughs to try and um, get through darker times, which at the moment is quite good because a uh, good training background <laughs> to get through darker times. Yeah, and, and obviously a lot of your, your work comes event-based and, um, you know, that kind of industry. How, how have you found the effects of, you know, COVID and the lack of events? Uh, well, we have no industry at all at the moment. Um, we, there are a few online gigs and people are doing really well to try and keep some form of entertainment going. Um, Rachel mentioned the Stan Comedy Club. They were kind of first out of the, uh, with the whole kind of online um, gigs. They actually did, they actually had their first online gig two days after lockdown was announced um which was amazing and they, they were kind of front runners in that whole setup and um the gilded balloon not far behind them with sofa set lists uh and again really born out of necessity to keep the clubs going and um, which i'll talk a little bit about as we go through because comedy is is not a supported art form it's not a funded art form mm -hmm. um and i'll talk a little bit about some of the work that i've been doing around that in lockdown as we go through but yeah so initially it was the clubs basically surviving um, and trying to find ways to make money um, during lockdown. So we started the, with the stand um, and then all of the clubs have kind of taken on as, as we've got further into lockdown, their own versions of how they're going to keep comedy live during COVID and how we're going to keep going. The Monkey Barrel Comedy Club, which is a great uh, niche kind of small comedy club in Edinburgh, have started printing vinyl recordings 
um, of shows that they that they had um, during Fringe 2019, which is amazing. Uh, a lot of comedians have taken to Twitch. Uh, and yeah, so just various different ways to try and keep going. But as an industry, there is nothing. It is a kind of barren landscape at the moment. Um, there's a few driving gigs pop, popping up and down. Yep. But nothing that could really equate to proper live stand-up is happening at the minute. And old school stand-ups like myself <laughs> have been doing it for 17 years. We, we're finding it toughest to adapt, I think. <laughs> we're, we're finding it tough. And how did, can I ask you, you did, a, you did an online gig. Like, how does that feel and how does it work? Because I always imagine, like, comedy is part of being in the room. So you're having a laugh with everybody else that's around you and, and the comics are feeding off the crowd and that's what gives it the kind of buzz and the energy. That must be yeah. totally weird doing it like this. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> like, I won't <laughs> lie, it's horrible. Uh, the first kind of um, bunch of gigs that were online were during lockdown. And um, so they were all pre-recorded. Um, a lot of the stuff that I was doing was recorded in, in the house. So I kind of treated it more like sketches. Um, when I first started stand-up, I did a lot of sketch work and um, I did a lot of improv as well. And so I kind of went back to those old roots of, okay, so how do you do this when you're not sure if it's going to work or not? And I just kind of wrote things specifically for that type of environment and that genre of like, and just kind of embrace the awkwardness of it. Mm -hmm. um, so the first couple of uh, stand lives that I did were like that. And then the last two that I've done are back in the club. So now that the restrictions have been lifted, um, we can actually perform in the club. Um, although it's only the performers and a couple of the, the stand staff and the cameraman. So I think there's kind of maximum eight people in the room while you're performing. And that is actually harder. And I did the first one four weeks ago. And I, I thought, yeah, this will be fine. It'll be fine. And I got up there. And as soon as you start speaking, you suddenly realize, oh, there's, I can't do this the way I would normally do it because there's not going to be any reaction to that question. Um, and so it felt it immediately just through you. Um, and then I did another one on Saturday there and I was kind of prepared for that. And my friend Liam Withnail and I were doing it together and we'd both done one before and we were like, right, we're going to be prepared for this. Um, and I was headlining and he was on first. And he did a brilliant thing because we'd had this whole conversation and he went up and did his bit. And in the room, he it, it, it felt like it was going really, really well. And it did go really, really well. And he came off and he was all smiles. And then I went on seven people later and headlined. Um, and he came off and he went, how did you find that this time? And I went, horrible. And he went, yeah, I did too. I just didn't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> It was very kind of them that, uh, but the more you do it, the the more used to it. That this one was definitely easier than the last one, um, and you just have to keep talking. <laughs> so, so I suppose um, you know, thinking you know from not being a comedian and, and certainly not a funny <laughs> a funny person at all, um, you know, I'm thinking about and from an out, outward perspective of kind of looking as you as a comedian and thinking, well, you know that 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 way of doing it in the clubs feels slightly like a, an older less scalable model right if you're trying to become really well known as a comedian you've got to go from club to club to club physically right mm -hmm. whereas i suppose you know with digital marketing and being able to control your own content you can very much capture an audience you know globally you know on a, of scale quicker and i'm just interested to know do you, do you think this has forced you to think a little bit differently about the content you create has it has it made you start to create more content online? Have you seen more comedians doing that? Um, you know, and I, and I don't want to take away from the physical part because I know like going to a comedy club, I've, I've you know, I've been, but I, I think, you know, you see, you see some comedians, I mean, just some that pop up on my feed, like to Jane Godley or, um, and uh, Lemmy and such like, and they've done such an amazing job of creating content that is kind of scales and, and goes everywhere. Do, do you think it will push you more towards that? Or do you think it's a balance between both? What, where, where's your kind of head at? I think like all things, you have comedians who are great at the online thing and you have comedians who are more who are more suited to the clubs. Yeah. And then you have those very rare comedians, Jeannie Godley being the, the one that I would talk that I would say um, who can do both. Because yeah. if you see Jeannie in a club, 
She is, I mean, unbelievable. She is on fire. She's amazing. Um, and then you see the content that she puts out online. And again, she just seems to know she hits the, the nail on the head every single time. And then there's people who are less good at it or who are amazing at online, but then you see them on a stage and it's it just falls flat. Um, yep. I, at the moment, um, I'm very much a, in the person, in the flesh, in the club. Sure. That's where my heart is. And mm -hmm. I haven't massively, other than doing the things for the clubs that I've done, um, because you know that you need to give back. Um, and I've done a couple of, podcasty type things um i've not embraced the twitch i feel i might be a bit old for twitch even though lemmy who is older than me does it but like, <laughs> i i haven't embraced the twitch a lot of the younger comics a lot of my friends have gone on twitch and done that whole thing but also i've just had a baby so a lot of my time at the moment mm. in lockdown has been about being a mum um and it took me a long time to get there so um, not that I'm using the baby as an excuse. <laughs> no, but, but they, they definitely take up a lot of time. As a... They take up a lot of time. <laughs> and uh, in order to get like a big following, you have to kind of be on it every day at the same time and, you yeah. know, just kind of really, really focus on it. And my friend Liam Withnail, he's, he's built up a really um, strong following on Twitch since this lockdown happened. Um, Marilene Robertson, who's a comedian from Shetland, She's amazing on Twitch as well. She just, she, and she's going to kind of, she's a very funny person. Um, but she's, what she's doing is she's doing like storytelling and doing a lot of kind of folklore stuff from Shetland. And mm. that's all been amazing for me to watch. And I've enjoyed um, it as a content, as a, as a, as an audience member. So it's actually been lovely to be an audience member and see what um, everybody's coming up with. Uh, and yeah, we've been involved. My production company has been involved in some exciting things during lockdown. Um, but personally, me as a comedian, I just can't wait until we get back in the clubs because that is that is where my heart is. So what has your production company been up to then since lockdown? Because you mentioned it a couple of times. You've teased us. Tell us what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so the one of the first things that we did was uh, we produced um, a podcast, a fictional podcast. So lots of comedians have their podcasts and lots more since lockdown. Um, and again, I didn't really want to be another comedian with the podcast about themselves as much as we all love talking about ourselves in comedy. Um, so we decided to do a fictional podcast and it's called The Corona Logs. Uh, and it's centered around five stories from the one street during lockdown. Uh, and they're kind of, they're all intertwined. Um, but you can listen to them in any, in any way. Um, and yeah, that was, that was lovely. And we worked with um, a, write, a writer and comedians and actors, all of whom we've worked with before uh, and produced some I, th I think some of the best writing and some and uh, like a really awesome podcast um which has been listened to all over the world um and where also, can people find it jay where can we where can people listen to they, it where can... they can find it wherever you get your podcasts so it's on apple podcasts it's on spotify it's on podbean it's on so basically anywhere where you get your podcasts and um, you should be able to find it it's called the chronologues and you can also find it on our website um which is watch this space productions and also via the gilded balloon um, we did it in partnership with the Gilded Balloon um, and the idea is that the donations, any donations that we get from listeners, 50% um, go to trying to keep the venue open and mm -hmm. the rest go to be split between the creatives that were involved in it. And so that's been really exciting and some of the feedback from that has been just brilliant and hopefully is going to lead to some more um, fictional podcasts, which they're aren't as many of um so there's so many kind of true crime and comedians talking in cars and comedians talking in their bathrooms and comedians talking in cupboards and comedians to basically anywhere comedians will talk anywhere there's a lot of that um but there's not so much kind of fictional stuff um and especially kind of clever funny, fictional things so uh yeah we're hoping to do some more of that type of work which is exciting. excellent well, I've always thought, right, now hear me out, 
I all like I always think the best brands on social media, the best, most engaging brands, always have the funniest uh, community managers managing their brands. And so for ages in Made Brave, I've always said we should hire comedians. We need to hire comedians in the social media team and just and just let them be there and be funny and say, be funny for that brand all day long and keep trying ideas and see what works. And uh, <laughs> Keenan's chuckling because he's heard me say this many, many times. <laughs> and so I'm thinking there's a big opportunity because there's lots of comedians right now. And there's, you know, and I just want to, I've never, I've never managed to speak to a comedian about it. So I would love to know yeah. what are your thoughts? And would you like to take over Made Brave's community management for a oh, week wow. for <laughs> us? And uh, just be funny. Yeah, sure. That sounds like a job offer I can't turn down. Because <laughs> <laughs> then we can try it and we can test it and we know. And if it's rubbish, everyone can tell us it was rubbish. And if it's great, well, then we, we've just we've just proven something. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if you guys are aware of, there's an Edinburgh um, bagel shop called Bross Bagels. Yes, I know um, them. By, so Lara Bross, um, she uses uh, Watch This Space production to uh, manage her online content <laughs> um, and uh, the videos and films and things like that that she does. So, um, and that's been great. Uh, so yeah, I'd be absolutely up for it. Um, and I love some of the stuff that's been happening over lockdown um, in terms of uh, kind of Twitter replies from uh some of the big brands uh has been i love i'm liking the use of humor um during this time see uh, I, I also i almost think it's like it'd be quite good to do it undercover so don't tell all our followers that we've got a takeover for the week but it just yeah. we just start being a wee bit cheekier uh a wee bit funnier <laughs> and and start to see what happens and try different levels of humor until we find what fits yeah see that's the dodgy aspect <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to destroy destroy your brand in one tweet. <laughs> it's, it's about being brave. It's just finding the right level of bravery. So that's 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 all it is. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it sounds good. I'm up for the challenge. Right. Good. Good. Well, we'll pick that conversation up uh, <laughs> after after this. Um, Rachel, I'm too busy so chatting there. That. Like, wait, hold on a minute. Like, what just happened there? Like, how do we follow all of that? Like, wait. It's like, like, <laughs> <laughs> good. So I was gonna. So Andrew always does this. He's like, right, this is what we need for um, made brave, doesn't he? <laughs> and then we can carry on. Um, so I, I wanted to know about um, breaking the news because that started off as a radio show. Am I right? Yeah. yeah and I then you it. were you were really involved in the radio show, and then it's gone on to TV. Um, so how did all that come about? Because it's been going for a while now. Yeah, I think we're, oh gosh, I should really know this. Um, it's been five years and I want to say we're in season 17, something like that. It's, it's something ridiculous. Like we couldn't, we can't believe like how, um, how many seasons it's been, but it's been, it's been going for five years um, and it initially kind of started as all these things do as um, conversations uh, with producers, um, Dave Flynn, <clears throat> uh, BBC, who's who used to be a comedian himself and who is an amazing producer, and he kind of came up with this concept of breaking the news, and he very quickly got a team involved in that, um, Des Clark and a whole load of writers and acts, and just kind of spent the first two seasons just really honing what it was going to be and how it worked um and yeah and then it just took off after that and when the bbc scotland ch channel launched um it was one of the first um pitches that were picked up was to change it into a into a, a live show so now actually what happens is that every or it's kind of because of covid it's changed a little bit but initially what was happening was that every second season was also a television season um, and so basically what they do is they, they do three recordings in one show. So they do the podcast, which is like the uncut live version. They do the radio show and they do the television show. Uh, and as a performer and writer for the show, um, that's, that's difficult. That was a huge learning curve because you're actually, that's three different audiences because the people mm -hmm. who listen to the podcast aren't necessarily BBC Scotland Radio Scotland listeners and then the people who are watching it on television hadn't necessarily ever heard of it before. 
um, or listen to the podcast or on the radio. So you had like three very separate audiences um, to kind of hit with the one joke. <laughs> So that was a steep learning curve, um, but really exciting. And uh, they've they've done amazingly during lockdown, um, during the whole crisis. They again, they were just about to start their uh, the, the season for yeah. They were just at the very start of a season. So I think I'd actually was on the first season show, um, and then two season uh, two episodes later, it went into lockdown. And so by the time I, I did the first, the middle and the last episodes of that season, and it's only like 11 shows long, and just so much had changed by the time we got to the last, because by that time we were doing it in our houses, on our mobile phones, via apps, um, as opposed to the very first um, episode of that season, which was in, was in front of 200 people in Summer Hall in Edinburgh. Um, so it just showed you how quickly things had changed. Uh, yeah, so that was bizarre. <laughs> and how do you adapt your writing? Because breaking the news is, is topical. And so, like, you know, there's a part that's like, we're living in a global pandemic, but there's only so many jokes you can really have about a global pandemic. Yeah, luckily we had um, quite a good grounding in trying to be funny about the same subject after four years of Brexit and... <laughs> <laughs> And before that, the uh, the Scottish uh, independence um, stuff that we had been doing for years before that as well. Um, so, yeah, actually, what what the writers um, or the producers rather decided to do, which I think was a really clever idea, was just to try and not do so much about COVID. Obviously, you had to reference the fact that we're in lockdown and some of the stories had to kind of be around the fact that there was lockdown, but to try and keep it as positive and light. Um, and they made a decision and they asked the writers to try and steer away from the darker things that, you know, previously were, you know, up for grabs. And um, they said, you know, we're probably not going to put on really dark jokes or you know anything too controversial because people just need a hug at the moment and they need a laugh and it needs to be a, a positive show um and so that was lovely actually to be writing as much positively as you could um around what was going on at the time um and I think that really really worked and it, it everybody was really nervous not to have the live audience because that's such a big part of breaking the news um is the live reactions because I don't know if, if any of you have ever been to see a live recording of breaking the news but actually it records for nearly two hours for a 25 minute show so what gets cut that I mean 80 percent is cut to get that 25 percent um, and the comedians very much as Andrew was saying earlier they we we flow off of the reactions in the room so everybody was really nervous about what it was going to be like to take out the audience and actually the first one we did in lockdown we still did it in the studio um but it's it socially distanced um and then as things started to progress we realized we couldn't do that anymore and we're having to do it from home and the one that we did in the studio we just suddenly went oh, this is actually going to work because it just had that much more kind of podcasty feel it, it it just moved itself very easily over to that and a lot of that is down to the absolute expertise of Des Clark as the host who just mm -hmm. makes everybody feel at ease and he's got such a great you know kind of a relationship with the acts that come on and also just with the show and the format so Des has really made that work and it's and it's such a delight to work with Des whenever I get the opportunity to work with him I absolutely grab it with both hands so working so with do you Dave, write so when you write, Jay, do you write for yourself and others on the show? So the comedians all write for themselves, um, but there's a writer's brief that goes out at the start of each week, um, which is more kind of generally for the, the topics on the show. Not giving too much away. <laughs> I know, sorry, I'm not asking whose jokes you're No, no, that's I, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, just just before we jump on to the next question, just um, thanks for everyone that's joined us. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. So if you've got any questions for Jay, if you don't mind popping them in the comments below. So stick them down below and I'm sure Jay will oblige us and answer any questions you have. Um, but Jay, I, I was kind of um, wondering, I suppose, like where, where do you look for inspiration? You know, sometimes I can imagine you've got to be funny all the time. That can be pretty challenging. 
Um, you know, wh where do you go when your ideas dry up? You know, wh what inspires you and how do you, you know, how does that process work? Yeah, I mean, I write in a couple of different ways. So obviously for like breaking the news that you are given a brief that you write to and you're writing satire about what's going on in the world. Um, so that's, that's great. You've got a topic and you write for it. Um, for the Fringe, for the last three years, um, I did a trilogy, um, which started with a show called Bisms, um, and then moved to a show called Weeshed, and then finished with Jammy, all my favourite Scottish words. Uh, and that was really about my journey, um, my fertility journey. So that was really quite a personal uh, show or trilogy of shows. Um, but I obviously I didn't pitch it like that because as the marketing people, you'll know, you don't want to go, oh, come and hear about my fertility journey. <laughs> There's like a lot of people going, no thanks, no thanks at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it had overarching themes in each um, in each show. So Bisms was just about kind of cheekiness and Scottish culture. Weeshed was about never knowing when to shut up. And Jammy was all about luck um, and, and what it means to be lucky or unlucky in life but the overarching kind of thing was over this three years so when I started the shows um we had been going through fertility treatment for nearly six years my my husband and I and it had been a really difficult journey and it was just trying to make something positive come out of that um and Jamie when I initially conceived it was about giving up on like when you decide your luck's not going to be in mm -hmm. um and when you decide to give up and how does that affect you uh but <laughs> I decided that so you have to put your fringe uh, all your fringe stuff has to go in um in kind of October September October time so literally you just finish the fringe and then you're gearing up for the next fringe and you know I decided this and I'd written all the bio and everything for it and then in the February I got pregnant <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, on my last ever IVF attempt, I uh, I we conceived our little our now little boy, uh, so I had to change the whole show. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so life kind of um, definitely has influence over everything that I write. I write about what I know. The funniest things to write about is what you know. Um, and then yeah. lastly, the other way that I generate ideas as a compare. You talk to people from the stage all of the time and something will just click. You know, they'll they'll tell you a story or they'll say that they've done something or they're with someone and it and it'll click a memory and you end up going down this avenue and you know, and then people are laughing and you're going, Oh gosh, there's there's something here. Um and then you know, if you're lucky, you'll remember it after you've had your few gins at, at the end of the show. <laughs> Last year was good because I was sober the whole time, so I wrote a lot. <laughs> um, and yeah, so you, so I will write from something that has been generated from the stage, which is which is the way I like best. Actually, that's that that sort of and kind of raw. We couldn't not ask you about the Brexit joke, though, could we not? I mean, you must be sick of saying it. Oh, okay. I, can't, I can't even see it anymore. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, well, it's so outdated now because everything I has know. exploded. I know. What, what's Brexit? I, I don't even remember what that was. Nobody, nobody, and that's what Boris back, is hoping. <laughs> yeah. I know. I never thought, I said that when I was writing Breaking the News, uh, writing for Breaking the News. I was saying to the producers, like, oh, I never thought I would miss Brexit gags. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, that... Um, that joke was um, written in partnership with um, uh, Boris and <laughs> David Cameron. No. Um, it was, yeah, it was just something that I wrote for the, I think. Oh, we've oh. lost you. Just as about, we're oh. just about to get the joke. Oh, oh the, man. That's the, is that the joke? The secret that. is. <laughs> the treasure is, is buried. Yeah. Are you back? <laughs> this week's lottery numbers are. <laughs> <laughs> you froze, Jay. Are you back? Hello. <laughs> Hi. We, we didn't get the joke. You need to. We, we, we oh, heard nothing. Yeah. Brexit broke it. <laughs> the Brexit broke it. No, that was. Uh, I think that was actually the Tory party just like, coming in there, <laughs> making sure that. <laughs> 
it can ha <laughs> yeah so it, uh, I did this, the joke and um, it went viral and then I had a phone call from a friend um, in the early hours of the morning a friend from New York saying you're on the front of the New York Times um, and then like he he whatsapp me a picture but it was like of some march somewhere and I went no, I'm not there and he's like no to the side of that <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and so it was used as like an example of um how badly britain was handled. what was the joke you, you can't leave us like this <laughs> I can't, I you've literally, not told I us can't, the thing i can't it, it's like three minutes long i can't even remember it was all to do with well we've got four minutes left <laughs> <laughs> i literally can't remember you have to go and google it it's, it's oh all my about... god well what's the link tell us the link oh there's a belt up Oh my goodness! Oh. Uh, it was all to do with Brexit. Means Brexit means Brexit. It was just, I, it was a wordplay more than anything. I think I've seen it. I think I, I think long, I have. It's a very long wordplay. It's really yeah. funny. But it gets better, like as you listen to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost a minute long. Like, I will. Someone I put a link, Keenan. Let's find this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, link it. I'm not. I well, I literally couldn't remember it. <laughs> Or even, is there somebody listening just now that can help us? <laughs> Put, paste it in the comments, someone. I'll, I'll get on. <laughs> so lastly, we it. do have four minutes left. Does anybody in the comments have a question for Jay? Please, if you have one, if there's one inside your head, go on. Someone else is probably thinking it. Ask ask the question. <laughs> and if not, I think Keenan actually has a question that he was keen to ask. Oh, well... I yeah, I mean, you know, when you're coming up with your material, do you have do you have any specific people that you kind of like bounce ideas off of, or do you ever try with a couple of your friends? And I don't know. I'm just trying to picture before you get on stage, um, and and kind of do you like workshop it with people first? Um, no, no, <laughs> no. Just decide, it's funny in my head, and that's going to be funny, and I'm just going to go do it. I'll tell you why not is because now, now, like when I first became a comedian, I absolutely did that um, myself and Mark Nelson, who's an amazing comedian, who's done loads of amazing stuff through lockdown um, and Billy Kirkwood, another great comedian. We had a little group that was called Don Quixote Appreciation Society. I never named it. <laughs> um we used to we used to do that. We used to meet up on a Saturday afternoon and we would try different bits of material, you know, when we were first starting out. Um, but now it's been 17 years and um, I my whole world is comedians. All my close friends, best friends are comedians. Um, my partner's in the industry. Everybody I know is in the industry. And now if you start to try something on another comedian, they'll go, are you doing a bit on me? Are you doing a bit? Don't do a bit on me. Don't do a bit on me. <laughs> so... Um, now I, I might run it past um, some close friends or uh, and my husband um, or nine times out of ten I'll just go on stage and say it. And the rule is if you say it three times and it's still not got a laugh, it's not funny. But it, the first two times you can fail. Well, on that note, right, with a few minutes to go, where are you performing next? And that's from Jessica Armstrong. Hey, Jessica. Oh, gosh. Um... I don't know is the is the real answer to that question. Um, the stand lives have have I've just done one, and then they're going to Glasgow, and hopefully I'll do some more there. Um, there are some. Uh, it's, it very much depends what's going to happen with um, the Scottish government um, and live events. Um, there are some talk about garden shows and there might be some stuff happening during the fringe, which is outdoors, but it's all very late in the day. Everybody is kind of waiting for Thursday. So I think there's more, there's going to be more talk on Thursday about what's happening with live events, but unfortunately it's not looking good. It's not looking good for there being much going on. There's some stuff happening down south. Um, and you know, I might go down and do some some gigs down south, um, depending on how it's all going and what and what the infection rate's like and everything else. But at the moment, what I'm really kind of my goal and what I am focused on is um, I'm part of an organisation called the ASCA, which is the Association of Scottish Comedic Arts, um, and we are working really, really hard at the moment to have Scottish Government and Creative Scotland recognise comedy as an art form, because <laughs> currently 
not recognised as an art form, despite the fact that um, it is the largest part of the biggest arts festival in the world. <laughs> it makes up 40% of the Edinburgh Fringe. Um, and so if they don't see us as art, they're going to have to go back and really have a look at uh, what, they're, what they're doing um, in terms of their marketing for the Edinburgh Fringe. Uh, so we have a meeting with Scottish Government and Creative Scotland um, this week coming up, um, or next week rather, and um, yeah, we're just, we've been fighting really hard, I don't know if people have seen, we've had um, pieces on BBC Scotland, we've been on the radio, we've had stuff on Channel 5, Sky News has come to speak to us, um, just really trying to, to get comedy seen in the same light as artists and now the live music have, have been given some funding and yeah basically we we don't ever ask for money um which doesn't mean we haven't applied for it before <laughs> really but we it's because we're seen as a commercial venture and because we're seen as a popular art um we've never been given any funding so at the moment we are just because people you know are really really struggling at the moment um mm. Comedians are even the ones who are doing some stuff online. Twitch doesn't pay very much, you know. Mm. Uh, the everything is on Patron or uh, buy me a coffee or just like through donations. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been it's been quite tough um, at the moment. Uh, so a lot of my energy is just very much going into trying to make sure that there's going to be an industry at the end of this because without the stand up industry, you don't have. A lot of the other things that people take for granted so you know a lot of comedians like I do work uh, do comedy workshops um, in schools I do them for um, prisons um, they're Elaine Miller who is an amazing um, comedian also does mm -hmm. loads of stuff for women's health and all of that will go as well because if there's no comedy then there's none of the, there's no comedians there's none of this and also there's a there won't be any new comics coming up mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. we need to try and save the mm -hmm. venues at the moment yeah well anything we can all do to help um we yeah. certainly will i mean I, just an idea that's popping into my head is that every day i run on all hands and it's very challenging every day you've got to find a narrative and a way to kind of inspire and entertain your team and there's millions of businesses doing that online all the time so you know any com comedians um listening even yourself including jay you know i mean you know people like me want people to come in and help you know run those to entertain my friend's a magician a close-up magician he's lost all his um work and he's now doing that's what he's doing full-time he's going into company all hands and he's entertaining um in that form as well so there's other ways to to earn um i suppose it's just trying to be as creative as possible um we're on time. We're just uh, just over our 45 minutes. So I just want to take the time to, to thank you for joining us and to thank everyone that came on the channel and joined us tonight. Um, we will be back again um, in the next two weeks. So not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. We're doing them at five o'clock every single time. So make sure you have notifications turned on for Creative Entrepreneurs Club and for Made Brave. Um, we record all of these sessions. Um, Rachel pops them on the Creative Entrepreneurs um entrepreneursclub.co.uk website. We also pop them on the Made Brave YouTube channel and Made Brave LinkedIn, so you can catch up with any of these. And if you want to go back and watch uh, Jay's um, show again, you can, of course, do that on this channel here. Um, so, yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, any final words from you, Rachel? Just to say thanks so much, Jay. It's always brilliant speaking to you, and it's brilliant just to listen to the, the commitment and the, the talent that you have um, for not only for the Scottish scene, but for UK and, and Europe, because you you actually, you know, you're you're a wee bit modest, even though you're a brilliant comedian, doesn't normally work that way. But, um, you know, you work all over the world and you've been such a, an asset for Scotland. So just thanks oh, for thank joining you. us and thank you for chatting. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah, and we'll pick up that sneaky behind the scenes taking over Made Brave channel, that, that yeah. career, our next I'm conversation. Sure. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Well, thanks, everyone. I'm